All right, now that we all got a gym membership that will probably stop using one week into the new year, let me offer you some daily and weekly alternatives in Guild Wars 2. I've been racking my brain on how to present all of the possible dailies and weeklies in a single video, as I believe you should try to adapt your in-game routine to your goals and maybe even skip some of the things you don't like doing. Our goal is to have fun after all. So we're gonna start with all of the vendors and daily crafts, as these can be done in a couple of seconds or minutes at most. And if you own multiple alt accounts, it could even be worth doing some of them on those as well, provided you have enough resources of course. I am gonna add a bunch of links in the pinned comment, so if you're unsure where to go for anything I mentioned in this video, check the list there. The first thing you can do when you log in is accept a 5 astral acclaim. The rewards in the wizard's vault are too good to pass up on and this is basically a freebie. And once you've cycled through the list of vendors I'm about to go over, you probably will want to finish all of your daily objectives and maybe even start working on some of the weekly or the special ones. The first actual vendor I like visiting is buy 4373 in the fractal lobby or in the mistlock sanctuary if you happen to own the launch pass. Here you can buy 30 heavily discounted fractal keys and 30 discounted ones every single day. Both of these are profitable, even if you have to buy the fractal encryptions on the trading post. Next, I usually visit the peddler in Dragon's End, as they will sell you writs that can be consumed for imperial favor without having to do any meta event or hard. Make sure you only buy the one writ for 1050 karma and trade in three writs of each of the other maps for five Dragon's End writs. The one that costs 10 imperial favor is basically a scam. After this, I usually go to Drizzlewood and buy 5 cash keys, as well as trade in some materials to the Quaestor. The keys can be used on the chests after you complete a meta in the southern part of the map, and I'd even recommend buying keys if you don't plan on doing the meta anytime soon. You can actually buy more keys per day, but every 5 keys the price will double, so this way you can build up a nice reserve without wasting too many materials in the future. The same vendor also lets you trade in 5 sets of materials for commendations. These will basically advance a track that you can check in your achievements panel, which will eventually reward you with weapons, material boxes, and every time you complete a full track, you get a reward chest with a mystic clover and some other goodies. Next, we have a few vendors that will have you teleport to multiple locations. Every day, you can visit 5 vendors that sell Paxcos mapping materials, as well as some recipes for karma. The mapping materials can be consumed in any of the core Tyria maps and will advance the map reward track. These are, as far as I know, the best karma to gold conversions you can do. The final set I like to visit are the faction provisioners. I always go to the ones in Lion's Arch and the Black Citadel, as well as the ones in Heart of Thorns. Here you can basically trade items in exchange for provisioner tokens, which are often a bottleneck in the endgame. You can use them for a couple of achievements, as well as gifts of craftsmanship to make certain legendary items, and even if you don't want to do either of those, you can still use them as a currency for bloodbound weapons, which are the ideal weapon when you're leveling a new character, or crafter supply bags, which will yield about 6 silver of profit per token. Next we have the gizmos, which you will need to unlock through various achievements. The only one I would postpone getting is a fractal reliquary, until you get to a point you have enough gold, because that one is rather expensive. The other ones all offer pretty decent rewards and will often allow you to use some of your account bond materials. There's also some daily crafting you will want to do. Personally, I always make sure to craft the 4 ascendant materials as well as the 2 plates of plant food. If you have the resources, you could consider adding a clay pot and a heat stone to the list. And finally, something that would take time to set up but will tremendously pay off is parking any character you don't play anymore near a daily chest. That's the dailies done, but there are two more vendors that you will want to visit every single week. The first is Levas in Arborstone, who will trade you 5 antique summoning stones. You could either save these up for your own gentry legendaries or sell them on the trading post for about 12 gold after taxes. And the final vendor is Mayung Hee in Saitung Province, who will take 4 jade statuettes and will give you some reward boxes in return. You can either get these statuettes yourself by completing each of the End of Dragons meta events or simply by buying them on the trading post. And now comes the tricky part, as you might not be interested in doing all of the activities I'm about to mention and I can't possibly name every single thing there is to do in the game either, so I'll go over general categories and give a few examples instead. If you would like a tailor-made recommendation, feel free to join my discord and me or any of the other people there will be happy to help. 
I've already mentioned the daily and weekly achievements for Astral Acclaim, which probably should be your number one priority. And I like combining these with the weekly rift hunts to passively acquire essences for the upcoming legendary armor. If you don't want the armor, you could also craft Cryptis motivations with them for some extra gold instead. Next, I always gather. At a minimum, I gather everything in my home instance as well as from two guild halls. If you don't have a fully unlocked home instance, check the LFG under Central Tyria Parties. More often than not, people will be offering you to join theirs. And if no one is listing, it usually only takes a couple of minutes to be invited by someone else. If you like gathering, the next map you want to hit is Biora Marches, which will net you a considerable amount of eternal eye shards as well as chests to open along the way. After that, I would either recommend doing a run of all of the rich Orichalcum, Platinum and Iron Veins, or maybe any of the Living World Season 3 and 4 maps. Finding an efficient gathering route might seem near impossible at first, but both Ticket and Lady Elisa have some great routes for you to follow with the Pathing module in Blish Hut. The next category is meta events and map farms. Some of them take a literal minute, like the Matriarch in Verdun Brink, while others will take you the better part of an hour. There are way too many to list, so what I would recommend is either checking the event timer page on the wiki to see where you can go next, or the fast farming website to see which ones are the most profitable. I usually do at least one Oxovine per day, as this is a great source of unidentified gear. And if I have the time, I repeat it every two hours. The other meta events I do are rather random, and basically depends on when I'm playing the game. Another category of both daily and weekly activities is instance content. I try to do the 5 Ice Brood Saga strikes, Dragon Storm, as well as the EOD and Soto daily strikes every single day for profit charts. They're a great way to acquire Ascended Gear or some cosmetic rewards. I also try to do the daily tier 4 and recommended fractals, and I've been working on adding CMs to the list as well. Fractals are an amazing source of gold, but if you've never done them before, they might seem out of reach right now. I made a zero to hero guide on how you can get started today and work through the different tiers without breaking your bank, which I'll link in the pinned comment as well. Finally, there's the weekly raid wings you can choose to complete. Personally, I still pug them and have gotten most of my life from pugging as well. This year, I'm working on setting up a guild so I can take anyone who wants to come along. If you'd rather get started now, but not through the LFG, there are some discords you could check out that also offer training runs or are looking for static members. And my final category isn't really a category, but a custom list of the things I personally do. These are basically adapted to my own personal in-game goals. I am trying to craft all gentry legendaries by the end of the year and my major bottlenecks are imperial favor and gold. I'm an expert in arriving too late at meta events, so to make sure I get enough favor, I do the two hero points in Saitung province, the two in New Kaineng and the one in Arborstone, and I combine those with the first heart in Saitung as well as two of the New Kaineng ones. All of them only take me a couple of minutes, which opens three more vendors for me to trade in Ritz. On top of that, I also open four chests in the Echo Vault Forest and do the Valdhurst Crypts mini dungeon, as well as the Spirit Vestibule in Saitung Province. I've been getting more than 10 rune stones per day from these, which help reduce the cost of my legendaries and will net me some extra gold when I sell the excess. And one final thing I've been doing to significantly reduce the costs is the daily trading for a piece of ambergris in Arborstone, as well as the daily fishing achievements to get some extra fish that I can trade in as well. I will make sure to document this whole strategy in a separate video soon. A final thing I like to do every day is redoing all of the hero points in Heart of Thorns, as I'm saving up the respective currencies to unlock some skins, and they're one of the best sources for unidentified gear, and they offer a decent amount of experience as well. That about covers everything I can think of right now. As mentioned, check the pinned comments for any links that I think are relevant, or join my discords if you want to ask me anything else. I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel as both of those things really do help me out.